call this meeting to order. Good evening, City of Conway. Good evening, Commissioners and Planning Staff. My name is Brandon Rule, Chairman. We'll start with a roll call to order and a roll call. Uh, Mr. or Commissioner Ingram. Uh, Mr. Bell. Ms. Fincher. Mr. Gaynor is at a work event. Ms. Sanders Jones. Present. Excellent. Ms. King. Present. Mr. Webb is out this evening. And Ms. Williams. Present. All right, we have a quorum. So we have nine items on this agenda this evening. Uh, the first two are going to be subdivision review meetings. Before that, we will look at our approval of our minutes from our October meeting. Uh, let's see, that was the 18th, 2021. Commissioners, any corrections? No corrections, but I'll make a motion that we um, approve the minutes from the October meeting. I'll Thank second. You. Thank you. We have a first and a second, or motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Those minutes are approved. Now moving into our subdivision items, the first one of which is a request for preliminary plat approval of South Sterling Subdivision Phase 2. Good evening. I'll, I'll be down here uh, doing all the reports tonight. So you'll get to see this side of me, right? <laughs> um, this is South Sterling Phase 2 PUD. Uh, if you're familiar on South Donaghy, uh, Sterling Drive, uh, there's a, another small subdivision that has been developed out there. This is a 16 lot uh, subdivision. Uh, which will have lots ranging in size from 0.11 acres to 0.15 acres, uh, which is consistent with the requirements for the PUD development. Uh, it will access off of Moody Gardens, which is there to the northeast corner of the, the property, uh, which is phase one of this uh, development as well. All the lots will front onto uh, that extension of Moody Gardens with lots 27, 28, and 36 being unbuildable due to drainage improvements and a hammerhead turnaround. Lots 27 and 28 uh, will have the uh, temporary turnaround placed in it. As a result, it, it will essentially make those, those lots unbuildable uh, for a time. Should uh, they be able to punch this out to South Donaghy in the future, uh, that easement on that those portions of that where the, the hammerhead is could be vacated and those those could be turned into buildable lots in the future. Uh, this will have a 50-foot uh, right-of-way with uh, five-foot sidewalks with a six-and-a-half-foot green space. Um, based on its consistency with the comprehensive plan, it was consistent with uh, at least three goals, providing opportunities for a variety of housing choices, uh, both suitable and affordable, situated throughout the city. Uh, protect established residential areas from encroachment of incompatible uses and provide high standard of development and redevelopment of residential areas and provide a logical pattern of land uses throughout the community incorporating an efficient relationship between transportation, public services, residential, commercial, industrial, and business areas. So based on those uh, elements, uh, planning staff recommends approval of the, the preliminary plaque contingent upon the uh, completion of the amended punch list and the associated conditions of approval. So, any questions? Commissioners, any questions for staff? Again, this is not a public hearing item. All right. Well, we'd like to hear from the applicant um, or the owner if they have anything to add. Sure, if you will, state your name and address for the record. Richie Hambacon, 86, Richland Hills, Conway. Yes, um, yeah, me and my brother wanting to do this. Uh, phase phase one went real well and just trying to go with phase two. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Hambacon? Thank you, sir. Okay. Any opposition to this request? All right, we'll bring it back into commission. Any more thoughts? I'll move to approve. We have a motion uh, and a second. All those in favor? 
say aye. Aye. Aye as well. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. Move into our second subdivision item. This is a request for preliminary plat approval of Bell Valley Subdivision Phase 3. Mr. Walden. Yes, this is located uh, approximately 100 feet southeast of the intersection of Bill Bell Lane and South German Lane. Uh, the applicant is uh, Mr. Frank Shaw is pr requesting preliminary plat approval of a 21 lot subdivision. Uh, it will be represents phase three of Bell Valley subdivision. You'll be seeing uh, several other phases of this uh, in the future. Uh, the buildable lots range in size from 0.15 acres to almost a third of an acre consistent with the requirements for R1 zoning. Uh, it will access off of uh, access off of Bill, Bay, Bill Bell Lane. Um, the two lots, will, the lots will front off the internal streets. There will be a one that comes directly off and then one that is, is perpendicular to that. Uh, lots 1 and 21 fronting Bill Bell Lane will access off of those internal lots as well. Uh, all the lots will have proposed sidewalks. Um, based on this, it was uh, the development is consistent with the, the three goals I stated previously on the other item with the, with the comprehensive plan. So based on that, uh, planning staff recommends approval of the preliminary plaque contingent upon the completion of the amended punch list and the associated conditions of approval. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Commissioners, any questions? Now, you said lots 1 and 21 that front Bill Bell Lane would be accessible from the interior of the development. Yes, uh, essentially uh, there will be, you'll see that lot one there will have, will gain access, it has direct frontage on uh, street A. Lot 21 um, and 20, essentially there'll be a, a share, there's a shared access agreement that goes between those lots over to lot 19. So okay. be a shared driveway. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shaw, do you have anything to add? Just, just a bit. Thank you. Um, thank you. We're um, this will be phase three of Bell Valley, and uh, we're doing one street at a time as our new method of operation. So the next phase will be due north of this, then another phase due north of that, and so we will be building from south to north. The property south of it, uh, fate of it is as yet undecided. Um, phase one uh, has. 13 lots has sold and closed and there are 13 houses going up foundations in and we expect to close on the other 30 lots before the end of the year and get houses started there. So the property is moving very well, quite a few are sold. So there is a mutual access agreement on 19, 20 and 21. And um, if, there are any, if there are not any other questions, that's all I have. Good, commissioners. I move to approve. Got a motion? Second. All right. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'd like to. Yeah, there's corrections there needed on the plat, which I assume will be done. And then those conditions are boilerplate. So, yes, for the record. Absolutely. Move to approve with conditions and corrections. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. All right, now we will move into our public hearing. Uh, and I'll have to say the Conway Planning Commission makes recommendations to the City Council on these public hearing items. The items that are being reviewed on the agenda this evening will be considered by the City Council on November 23rd. Items not approved by the Planning Commission this evening may be appealed to the City Council within 30 days of the date of Planning Commission denial, with the exception of any decisions that are made by the Planning Commission acting as the Board of Zoning Adjustment. I'll also state that um, to kind of, in essence of time, so we're not here all night, we'd ask that uh, for each person to speak in favor of this request, elect your representative to come up to speak for the first 10 minutes and then every subsequent person in favor of that request two minutes and then likewise for the opposition if you could elect one representative to come up and speak for the first 10 and then subsequently two after that that would be greatly appreciated 
So with that, our first public hearing item this evening is a request to modify conditional use permit number 1398 for 7.61 acres located at 1301 Sunset Drive. Mr. Walden is going to walk us through this. Mr. Chairman, I just want to clarify it, three. It's three minutes. Bylaws. bylaws okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, we, we, I know we've, we've got a lot of folks interested in this, this particular case. Yes. Uh, if this case uh, looks familiar to you all, it is because it is. Uh, you reviewed it uh, last May of last year. Uh, this is lot two of the Walmart Baker subdivision. So this is the lot behind the neighborhood Walmart. Um, uh, so at the end of Ferris, this uh, pro is proposed access from Sunset Drive. This was previously approved uh, as a conditional use permit. Um, part of that, part of the, one of the sort of aspects of it, what was previously proposed was to ac have access off of the end of Ferris Road, which is in the loading area from, uh, from Walmart, and additionally have access from Sunset Drive. Um, months and months and months of discussions with Walmarts, uh, the city working with the, with the applicant uh, again uh, as well to, to work on that. Essentially, Walmart declined to, to provide access. Uh, so based on interference with their, with their truck loading at the site, based on that, the applicant was advised to reapply for a conditional use permit given the significance of the difference between sort of the impact of the use based on it accessing off Ferris versus uh, accessing off Sunset Drive. So that's why it's, that's why it's here tonight. Um, looking at the zoning, the site's zoned R1. Uh, the requested conditional use is for a religious facility. Uh, on the conference plan, it indicates uh, for the property to be used for single family use, which religious facility is a, a, a applicable uh, type use in, in this location. Looking at traffic impact, um, the assumptions we made on traffic impact are that this would be a, a 21,000 square foot religious facility or church. Uh, that, that is based on the site plan, that the, the conceptual site plan that the applicant provided. In looking at uh, traffic generation, uh, it would generate approximately 63 vehicle trips per a typical, typical weekday. Uh, and then about approximately 283 vehicle trips per typical Sunday. Uh, th that is on a, a basis, I think, of, of, of a, the applicant can speak to capacity, but, but potentially four to 500 capacity, maybe 600 capacity, I'm not sure. Uh, I would have the applicant clarify that. Um, in terms of portions of the site uh, rest within the floodway and floodplain, uh, which they're not utilizing those those portions of the site. That's the area towards kind of towards the the north that is largely uh, indicated as as green area. You'll notice on the on the site plan and the revised site plan. Um, there are no current improvement plans uh, for Ferris Road at this time. Uh, connecting Sunset Drive to Ferris Road uh, was uh, investigated or intended. Uh, but it was determined, determined that the connection was not supported by adjacent property owners and would require eminent de domain, so that, that's something that the city uh, is not currently exploring or, or looking at. Uh, looking at the, the comments for this, um, uh, under review of conditional uses, uh, staff considers the provisions of uh, section 901.2 paragraph J uh, and the code, so that provides our sort of kind of our basis for the items that we review when we, we look at this. Uh, the applicant intends to construct a 21,000 uh, square foot uh, church. Uh, the use is not allowed by right, but it is allowed as a conditional use in, in R1 zone. Um, again, with its access off of Sunset Drive, it would place all traffic entering and, and leaving the site onto Sunset Drive or Meadow Drive. Uh, that has resulted in, I think, considerable concern uh, regarding the, the traffic impact on the, the surrounding neighborhood. Um, looking, you know, in terms of the, the, the site, although it's designated as single family, due to the existing flood constraints, the site's proxi proximity to intense commercial, traditional R1 development is probably not likely, uh, though the site could support more dense or cluster development style single family. So 
Uh, if you were to, to build exactly like the neighborhood to the north, that's probably very unlikely, but something slightly more dense uh, is probably possible on the site. Um, the institutional use would provide an appropriate transition from the intense commercial use to the south to the single family to the north and east. However, given the, the site's access and location at the dead end of a street in the very back end of a neighborhood, that, that is something that is, is concerning. Uh, if approved, the development would be subject to the provisions of Section 1101 of the Zoning Code for, for Development Review. So based on uh, that review, uh, staff recommends denial of the conditional use permit on the following basis. While the use itself uh, is, is compatible with the surrounding area, the use is accessed via Sunset Drive, given the scale of its the development, it being a, a 21,000 square foot um, facility, uh, would negatively impact the adjacent neighborhood. As such, these impacts make the proposed use inc incompatible to the surrounding area in a manner that would harm the general welfare of the neighborhood. Uh, thus, the use is not consistent with the standards of items one and two of paragraph J in section 9012 of the zoning code. We do have, uh, if the planning commission does choose alternatively to, to approve the item, we do have the, the conditions listed previously that are the, were subject to the, the previous approval on the conditional use permit. So, any questions? Does not look so. All right. Thank you. All right. We have the applicant or the applicant's agent to speak in favor of this request. I represent one church in the Baker family, but I'm going to yield my time to Pastor Paul Hudson. Okay. And let him take the big time and I'll wrap up. Yes, sir. Good evening, Commission. Good I'm evening. A pastor. And I'm used to, if I have to cut something out of a sermon, I can pick it up the next week. But due to the gravity <laughs> of this, I realize I got one shot. So I wrote it down. Uh, please do not take that as it means less. I just want to make the best use of our time. Sure. Okay? Thank you. Good evening, Commission. My name is Paul Hudson, and I reside at 2440 Little Creek Drive in Conway. I want to thank you for your time, your effort, your service to our community, and your consideration to our request to modify our previously approved conditional use permit. We believe that after hearing our heart and the facts, you will be inclined to grant us again the conditional use permit. My wife and I moved here 21 years ago. Uh, for 10 years, I faithfully served as a pastor at Second Baptist Church. To this day, I love that church and those people and appreciate what they do in our community. 11 years ago, though, Christy and I felt God calling us to start a church, not because somebody else couldn't do it right, not because we knew something someone else didn't, not because this is where our biological family is. Not even because this is where we had the biggest financial support. No, we knew God had called us to start a church in Conway. Because we love people. Since the day of one church's inception, we focused every bit of our ministry at Gatlin Park. Um, we have spent hundreds of hours as a church and thousands of dollars as a church loving on that community. Doing our very best to share the gospel. And I want to be extreme, extremely clear with you what I mean when I say the gospel. This is what I mean. That Jesus Christ is not a fairy tale nor a fable. He is the only begotten son of a God. He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life and died on a cross. And three days later, he arose. He did this to pay a penalty for my sin and yours, to give us real life and eternal life. Romans 10 says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And this gospel transforms lives. It transformed my life. It gives us purpose and brings hope. Again, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 15, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. For we desire that all people find joy, peace, and hope in Jesus. Two years ago, when our church decided that this would be best in our interest to have a place, we began looking for a piece of property. And when this piece of property came up that touches Gatlin Park, it became the most obvious and the best choice for us. In September, 
after all of that other stuff. In September, upon the direction of planning staff, we met with the Conway Fire Marshal's office, showed them our revised site plan, and walked through the details. They have verbally expressed that our proposed sunset satisfies all fire code requirements. The commission staff has denied recommending our request based upon Conway Zoning Code 901.2, paragraph J, item one and two. I would like to address them individually. Number one, item one says the proposed use shall be designated, located, and operated so that the public health, safety, and welfare will be protected. Number one, if one applies this generally, then we would never have any more houses, any more stores, any more streets, or any more apartment complexes in Conway. Number two, according to the fire marshal's office, this is not unsafe, and this does meet all of required uh, code requirements for fire access and for entrance. If traffic volume is a concern, then putting a church there like one church that would use it one day on Sunday morning and Wednesday evening would be a much better fit than putting in houses that would use it 24-7. Under bullet six, uh, number two is the proposed land use shall be compatible with other area properties. Under bullet six and other places, staff recommendations have even stated, and I quote, the proposed institutional use would provide an appropriate transition from intense commercial to the south to single family residential to the north and east. In regard to projected traffic impact on page 13 that we feel is grossly overstated, um, I personally looked up how the ITE, how they manage that. And I'm not sure where they got the data. I extremely appreciate all the work they have done. I, please don't, any passion that I have, please see that it's passion and not anger. This is just one of the most important things to me, right? Um, as I looked at it, I don't know what data they used, but Adam Treese will speak to, it is grossly exaggerated, the traffic that we would put in there. But I'll let him approach that. The city planning department shows um, uh, that there were nine public comments that were put in there. Um, by law, we mailed out 30 letters to property owners that touched within 300 feet of that property. Of those nine, Jamie Procoro of 1326 Sunset Drive stated, this will be a much safer option for herself and her children to travel to the walking trail into Walmart. She does not think the church will generate that much added traffic, but would like to see traffic calming devices, signs installed for safety. We agree. That leaves eight comments, of which two said they didn't like traffic coming through because they didn't want it to connect to Walmart, um, and that they wanted us to put walkways in that would c connect to Tucker Creek. We are. If you look at the site plan, we are giving an easement to the city of Conway to do a free walking to, to connect Tucker Creek all the way across. And if you look at the site plan, which Mr. Treese will refer to, even the new Pompeii Park puts it that it would be right there at our, at, what, at our easement. That leaves eight comments, two of which said they didn't like the traffic, and they connect. So of the nine, actually three are in favor of it. Of the remaining six comments, two are a husband and wife of the same household. Meaning at this point, and I know that there are others here this evening, but at this point, there are uh, five residences against our proposal out of a neighborhood of 84 homes. That is a 6% of people. I'm not stating that the other 79 people would be in favor of it, but I'm also not saying that the other 79 are against it either. Because I wish to honor and respect these people, and I mean that with greatest I mean that, that I mean to honor and respect these people. I would like who have submitted comments against us to not broadly paint over their opinions. I would like to quickly address each person's comments. James Locke of 1316 Sunset Drive believes that access through Ferris Road would be better. We agreed. We actually, if, if, if that had been possible, we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> But since Walmart has challenged us by stating that we have six floors of attorneys that will hold you up for years, we are left with this option. Or for the city to eminent domain. Eddie and Doris Morris of 2420 Meadow Drive. I know Eddie and Doris. They're friends. Um, Eddie and I served together at Second Baptist for the 10 years that I was there. 
We attended Second Baptist together and even served together at the same time. They are good people, but I'm afraid that they're misguided and have wrong information and have, and have built faulty pre presuppositions. Eddie's comments seem to center around that one church is just like Second Baptist. Actually, at the time that Eddie and I served together, Second was over three times as big as what we are or what we even propose to be, both in number of people and space in building. And they were on half as much land. Eddie has concerns that the roads are already close to needing repair. My opinion is that's great. Let's, let us go in there and build a church, then we can all redo the road. Eddie makes three comments about that there's a single entry. Really, to me, that is a question that is answered in the fact that the Conway Fire Marshal's office have given us verbal approval that they will approve, if passed to them, that this meets all of the fire code requirements. Eddie expresses concern that you should deny this because Walmart denied us. This is apples and oranges. Walmart denied us because they don't want any traffic back there. It's not a traffic flow. They just like control. Eddie says that if we do church like Second did, we would have lots of traffic there day and night all the time. And he's told the community that. And he's right. If we did church like Second Baptist did 10 years ago. 10 years ago when I was there, or 11, 12 years ago, it was a program-driven church with a school, a daycare, a Mother's Day Out program, as well as other ministries using the facilities all the time at all hours of the day and night. But that is not who we are as one church. And that is not what we do. We're a relationship-driven church. We mainly, the only scheduled events that we have are on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. We do the other things that churches do, funerals, weddings, take care of people. But the only scheduled events we have are Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Clint and, Bart, uh, Clint and Karen Bart, 1319 Sunset, said, we love one church, and this has nothing to do with their construction. She goes on to express concern about traffic, saying, we have enough issues with people not obeying the speed laws. My opinion is that sounds like a problem with current neighbors and not me. Norma Smothers of 2419 Meadows Drive essentially doesn't think that this is enough land. Respectfully, I would tell her, how much time do I have? Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Anyone else to speak in favor of this request? My name is Gene Chambliss. I reside at 476 Ackland Gap Road in Conway. I am an elder at one church. Uh, basically, I'm gonna finish what he was, wasn't able to finish here. So I'm gonna just basically read exactly what he has on paper. Uh, it says that Norma Smothers of 2419 Meadows Drive essentially doesn't think there's enough land. Respectfully, we don't think that she knows that uh, what it takes to do the church and what we have proposed. There's plenty of land there. Uh, she additionally mentions that there's problems with football and baseball parking, and we just want to make you realize that we would not be doing church at the same time they're having baseball and football games. Uh, Statler Strange of 1307 Sunset Drive, and actually I don't think he resides there, but this is a rental house for him. But to address his point, he says a church has no business being in the middle of a neighborhood and commercial zoning would be better suited. Well, we like to disagree with his opinion and so would uh, about six or seven other churches in Conway that are located in the middle of neighborhoods. Um, and that we want to remind that even you guys have approved that the planning department said this would be a very appropriate use for the land on our additional our permit from last year. <clears throat> Lastly, we want to share with you the comments from two people who would be our closest neighbor, Mrs. Fisher and Mr. Newell. Marie Fisher of 2423 Meadow Drive has no opposition to there being a church there, but does not want to cut through and expresses fear that it would be used as a parking lot for walkers of Tucker, Tree, Tucker Creek. We are here because there will not be a cut through to Walmart, and the city is already providing more parking uh, for our park and trail areas by what you guys are planning already for Pompous Park. Aaron Newell of 1303 Sunset Drive is concerned about leaving green space. We agree, and not only will we leave as much as possible, but we will plant more trees. But Mr. Newell's last comment is of great effect. He says if the city or church was willing to build a small walkway from the parking lot to the church proposed to Tucker Creek Trail, we would support the construction as that would be a benefit to us be able to walk from the trail to their home. That's already in the proposed to build the trail. 
We admit that traffic will increase, but there's also a significant increase in benefit and value to the community, both in how we better serve the area, the schools, and our closest neighbors. We would like to submit to you a 10-page summary document entitled Some Positive Benefits Churches Bring to Communities. It has slightly over three pages of cited studies, statistics, journal articles, and peer reviews from organizations and universities all over the U.S. The conclusion of this paper is churches promote outcomes that improve government stability and economic growth. Lastly, we'd like to thank you guys. We do not envy your job or responsibility. With understanding that we already had approval and in so much as we have sought to address the staff's current concerns and that we have respectfully addressed the neighbor's concerns and because that we meet all city code and fire marshal requirements, we want to thank you in advance for your approval as one church looks forward to loving Conway and our Gatlin Park community even better. Right. Thank you, good timing. The next person to speak in favor of this request, come on down. Thank you, Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Adam Treese. Um, I reside in uh, Greenbrier. Um, I'm a member of one church and uh, actually uh, before I attended One Church, my very first uh, meeting with One Church was at City in the Dark at Gatlin Park. So I'd actually met a lot of these people before uh, I ever actually came to the uh, One Church location on Front Street. So um, I'd, uh, I would like to speak a little bit about kind of what, uh, not to reiterate anything that they've said, but uh, the, the initial site drawings we had was to have the through street. Um, uh, as, as they've said, Walmart um, was opposed to that. We only had one other opposition uh, at that time, and that was uh, the, uh, one, of the, one of the same ones that had opposition this time if it was a through street. So now that it's not a through street, um, uh, the only two opposition we would have had before would have been eliminated uh, based on having one drive. Um, we do have some more this time. Um, uh, to address kind of the, the traffic flow, and I, I'm not, I, I really don't understand exactly how uh, the 283 um, vehicular uh, uh, count would uh, be on a Sunday morning. I, I don't know how that was derived. I know that uh, right now we currently use less than 100 spaces on an average Sunday. Um, our, our average attendance is 230 on an average Sunday. Um, and to, to try to meet, uh, you know, growth there, uh, we've requested for an occupancy of 600. I think Mr. Walden had, had mentioned it was five or 600. We have requested uh, uh, occupancy of 600 there, which would require five, 150 uh, parking spaces, six of those being handicapped. Uh, what we have drawn on the current drawing uh, would allow for 160 total, so we're just 10 above with two extra uh, handicap uh, spaces there. So that would be to meet maximum capacity. Um, as, he, as Paul stated, uh, meeting with the city, uh, essentially we created a hammerhead turn um, since we didn't have a through street now uh, after meeting with the fire marshal's office, which is very similar to the, the hammerhead turnarounds you see in a lot of the residential developments now. Um, uh, we, we are compared a lot to other, other churches um, as far as size. I, I think you'll see we cover less area uh, percentage-wise than, than many of those. Um, to jump to another uh, point as far as traffic within the neighborhood, uh, currently for the last 11 years we've, we've done City in the Dark and other events um, in the neighborhood just north of this that's you know very comparable to this. There are only 40 parking spaces between that off of Tyler and uh, uh, off the end of Broadview and we have 150 uh, volunteers show up from the church and we've had over 3,000 attendees and we've never had one complaint or one incident. So, thank you. Thank you, Adam. The next individual who would like to speak in favor of this request, please come on down. Hi, I'm Larry White. I live at 3110 Baxter Drive in Conway. I'm also the pastor at Woodland Heights Baptist Church on the corner of Prince and uh, Hogan Street in Conway. Uh, back in 2009, I was the director of missions for uh, Faulkner Baptist Association, which is 35 churches in, in our city and county. 
and we started a, a after school club in Gatlin Park. We tried to find a church to connect with that after school club. College students at UCA were conducting that. We couldn't find a local church. There's not one on Tyler Street. There's not there. There is a church, uh, obviously, next to this uh, next to the high school, but there wasn't one of our brand that was willing to do that. And so uh, when I met Paul Hudson, we started talking about, hey, where could you where could you do church? And I proposed to them that they find a location as qu as close to Gatlin Park as they possibly could. And that at the time was the location they've been on Front Street for about 10 years. Ever since, as, as Adam just stated, they have been there uh, every year. They've been there doing numerous things. They've been in the neighborhood. They've done a lot of ministry helping people. And uh, they've been great neighbors on, uh, on Front Street. Uh, they are welcomed by the other churches in our community. Um, they are well received. And I think they would be great neighbors in this community. And I think it would be a beautiful addition to that part of our town. Thank you. Next person like to speak in favor? Good evening. My name is Diane Henson, and I live at 13 Blue Jay Way. Um, I've been a resident of Conway since 1973. I've been a teacher in the Conway school systems for 32 years, teaching for 36 years. UCA and Hendricks are included in those years. Um, I served on Conway's Board of Transportation for several years as serving on the board for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I've worked closely with Choosing to Excel and Thelma Moten. I've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm also a graduate of the Faulkner County Leadership Institute. I don't know if y'all know that now they've changed the name, but anyway. My husband Robert and I have owned a real estate company in Conway for 10 years. I am still a practicing realtor. I'm also a member of One Church and close to being a member of it, close to the beginning of it opened up. We joined One Church because of the leadership of Paul Hudson. I share all of this with you to let you know my connection and concern with our great city. I've had the opportunity of seeing Paul's heart for people on many mission trips that we've been on together around the world. Paul's passions are for God, his family, and for meeting people's needs here, especially in Conway, Arkansas. Showing kindness as Christ has asked us to do. With Paul's passion, he has led our church to set up missions around the world. One of our most important missions is here in Conway at Gatlin Park and Ida Burns Elementary School. And as a teacher, that means a lot to me. Um, I don't remember anyone so far complaining that um, when we walked around the communities putting smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in their homes. I don't remember anyone complaining when we filled up their cars with gas in that neighborhood or when we hosted Easter egg hunts for anyone in that area or City in the Dark Fall Festival, a community cookout with our fire department helping with the slip and slide and even passing out backpacks full of school supplies for any child who came by there. In fact, it seems to have lightened up the community spirits in that area. Observing what one church has done in the park so far, I believe placing a one church building on this property would only increase the value of the area, as well as meeting the needs of others and offering the community more services from our members. Understanding that we are facing NIMBY, we have heard the concerns that there would be traffic going to and from the church, and yes, there will be. Well, there'll be, there'll be traffic from those who are going in to help other people who are in need. And yes, we are Christians, passionate for Christ, and helping anyone who needs us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Henson. Next person who would like to speak in favor? Good evening. My name is Scott Miller. I am the current director of the Faulkner Baptist Association. We have 32 churches across Faulkner County, 12 of those in the city limits of Conway. Uh, all of those churches are in neighborhoods. And all of those churches are good neighbors and are assets to the communities in which they are. Uh, Gatlin Park has been uh, the primary ministry opportunity 
uh, for one church uh, basically since their inception. It's a, it's a neighborhood and, and a part of Conway, a community in Conway, that is sometimes neglected uh, even by our churches, uh, but not by one church. Um, we have seen this as a godsend that this property was available for them and to them, and um, uh, we, we would like for them the opportunity to serve as neighbors in that community, neighbors with the community, neighbors with the city, um, and uh, we hope that you all will grant uh, their request to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to speak in favor. Everybody. My name's Kent Baker, and uh, I pre represent myself and my mom that owns the property in question. And um, as I was sitting back there, I kind of changed horses on what I was going to talk about. I kind of wanted to touch bases on all the positives that have came from that property that my mom has owned for over 40 years. Uh, when the city of Conway was in dire need of uh, expanding uh, Prince Street there, they come to her and said, we need some land to ex expand that road. So she gave them the land to widen the road. And they said, well, we want to do a roundabout at the same time and to try to ease some of the Conway High School traffic. So she said, well, how about I just give you the land to extend Ferris Road? So she gave the city the land to extend Ferris Road to help relieve school property or school traffic from their property. And then they came to her and said, you know, the walking trail from Gatlin Park, it, it, it comes up to her property and then it then there's Poppy Park. And so she said, well, how about I just move the fence back and I'll give the city of Conway the property to extend the walking trail on that side of the creek. So she gave the city of Conway property to extend that. So everything has been positive from that piece of property for the city, uh, you know, the neighborhood market, the Chick-fil-A, I think those are great assets for the, the neighborhood, the community. Uh, the relief of some traffic from, from the school, I think that's been a positive. And um, I think a church sitting in the middle of that seven acres on her property be, would have probably the most positive effect of anything that's happened on her land. And uh, I'll request that y'all, or submit to y'all that y'all would approve uh, the rezoning of their conditional use permit for them. Thank you. For Thank you. Time. Mr. Baker, can I say? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Baker, yes. is that property being leased to the church or? Are they purchasing? No, purchase? they're wanting to purchase it from my purchase mom. Purchase it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Come on down. Next person will speak in favor. I may be close to the last one, so smile. No worries. Thank you. Uh, my name is Corey Imboden. Uh, I live at 1048 Cadron Settlement Lane in Conway. And my time will be brief. I'm here to, uh, if I can, read a statement from Trip Leach, who couldn't be here tonight. If you guys know Trip, he's a uh, president of the Conway School Board. He's a small business owner and an active member in his church, which, by the way, is not our church. So if I can, I'd like to read that, and that'll be my time. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. To whom it may concern, I would like to speak on behalf of one church and their proposal for a church site located just south of Gatlin Park and close to Conway High School. One Church has been a positive community neighbor and has been a positive community partner with Conway Public Schools. Their benevolent, their benevolent efforts have had and continue to have a positive impact on our children, particularly Ida Burns and surrounding neighborhoods close to the park and the high school. These activities have included sock and coat drives as well as teacher supply purchases at Ida Burns and free smoke detector giveaways and yard cleanup in the neighborhoods surrounding the park. All these activities have demonstrated One Church's desire to help families in need and to create positive community relationships, not only in the school district, but in their surrounding communities. They also provide other positive community events for children and their families free at Gatlin Park, such as cookouts, festivals, and games for anyone who wants to participate. I believe that One Church would be a good neighbor complying with all ordinances, laws, and even going to great lengths to maintain positive relationships with surrounding locals, and therefore I would be in favor of their proposal. Disclaimer. I am only one voting member of the school board and therefore do not represent the school district's official position on this matter. However, I do speak for myself as one voting member of the district, a parent and a resident of Conway who loves this community and the people in it. Sincerely, Tripp. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to speak in favor. Thank you. I'd like to just, if I can, give, give you a little bit of history of this area. 
Back a time, I represented Walmart, neighborhood market, and they tried to buy the Pompey property. We couldn't get that rezoned. Their intention was to take eight acres and give 12 to the city. We couldn't get the rezoning for them. So then thereafter, Mr. Pompey, uh, the city wanted the property as for Pompey Park. That's why it's named Pompey. His name is Frank Pompey. He's from Arizona. So then I represented Mr. Pompey, and we sold the property to the city. Walmart neighborhood market originally looked at the Baker property because I was their attorney at the time, but it, the property wasn't quite wide enough. So later they came back with a redesigned parcel and, uh, and bought Miss Clara's, the front part of her property. The street extended, that's Ferris Road, back to allow some school ingress and egress, as you've heard. And the real, pro the real problem with this whole idea is that Ferris Road was not extended to the back of Walmart's property. Now, that's an anomaly that I don't find anywhere that I develop or anywhere that I've seen. That's an anomaly, and it's the problem. Had that street been extended to the back of Walmart's uh, property behind the building, then we wouldn't be here arguing over this. We could just tie in. It'd be done. But for some reason, that didn't happen at that time. The arrangement with Miss Baker and Walmart is, is that she can extend that street or use it for residential purposes. So we asked for a conditional use to get it a residential zone with a conditional use. I think that is a residential use, legally. Walmart does not buy that and said they had six floors of lawyers, just as you heard, and would litigate us forever. That's been about two years, and it's been frustrating for this church, and they're renting and not owning. So then Ms. Baker sold to Walmart and has that access, but only for residential, but not necessarily R1 could be MF1, 2, or 3, depending on how you zone it. James has said it's probably not appropriate for R1 in his report. So for the neighbors, we could come back and try to build multifamily MF3, 2, or 1, and you'd have lots of construction. Would you rather have a church or that? She's going to sell the property someday to somebody or her heirs will. Who do you want it to be? Do you want it to be the known people or the unknown people? So I've given you a brief history of the property, and I've been involved in it for gee, almost 20 years and all three different sections of it. And I, I don't have the answer for what you should do, but the anomaly is, is that Ferris Road was dead-ended. So one more fact, the Presbyterian Church on the corner came in when we did the Walmart. And there's a prohibition, I believe you'll find it, that says they cannot accept deliveries on Sunday. That was a concession to the church on the corner so that it would not interrupt their services. So. We have given concessions, so for them to have church on Sunday will not interfere with Walmart's trucking because they're banned from Sundays. That's my opinion. Thank I you, hope Mr. you vote Sean. for it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have anyone else that likes to speak in favor? Okay. We will open the floor to any opposition now. Have anyone that like to speak in opposition of this request? We've also. Good evening. Hello. I'm Marie Fisher, and that's my home right there underneath adjacent property. If you'll see that it's just a dead end lot, and it's just been empty for many, many years, because I've been there, well, since 76, okay? I'd love to see it developed. I'd love to see a home built there. They have addressed a lot of issues, and they put a lot into this, and I admire them for it, you know. And I'm a Christian woman. I'm just not a member of one church, <laughs> you know. I wish, like Frank Shaw said, I wish we could get fair Road. Mm -hmm. That would be the best option as far as traffic, you know, because it's going to tear our streets up. Bell Mead's already about to go, and that's just from regular high school traffic, you know. And you're going to have it. And we've dealt with that for many years, and it's good. Don't get me wrong. I know when not to go, and I know when to stay home, you know, to miss it. But this 
I want them to have a good home. And I want them to have more than that one access and entrance, entrance and exits, okay? Because as far as fire safety, I do think about it. My husband was a firefighter for over 20 something years. And I know a lot of the firemen. And I'm glad they've talked to the fire marshal and all, but that one entrance right there just scares the daylights out of me for them and for us. As neighborhood, I'd love to keep it like it is. But do I want apartments? No. You know, but I, every time I've sit down and went over this in the class, it still looks like, why can't we do fair for them? That's their best option. And I'm praying they get it. I really do, because fair says it would be a lot better interest. You talk about police, fire, EMS. They've got to have it in order to get to them. And they're going to want to start other programs at their church. They can't just sit there and say, we're going to die today. We're not taking any more in. You can't do that. And be a servant of my God at least. You can't. You've got to take everything he gives you and give it your best shot. And that's what they're doing. And I admire them for it. But please, please let it be Ferris. Because I don't want to move. I'm getting too old and honorary. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next individual, or do we have anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Come on down, if you will, state your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Blake Oregon. I uh, live at 1317 Sunset Drive. Uh, I actually have a couple handouts for you guys, if you don't mind if I pass them out. One second, your microphone's not on. There we go. Go ahead. So we moved into the neighborhood about two years ago, and uh, we have spent quite a bit of money uh, renovating the house that we live in at 1317. Um, and part of the reason we moved into the neighborhood was because it was a nice, quiet neighborhood. Um, there wasn't a lot of traffic going through, and the location of this uh, proposed church um, would greatly increase traffic. Um, it's at the end of the dead end on the neighborhood, and I have included a map with uh, what the main roads are and some of the roads that would have to be taken to access the church. And the people that were notified, they said by law were, uh, they lived in within 200 feet of the property line. Um, and this affects people that go much, much further than that line. It goes through the entire neighborhood. Um, my second concern is that I don't feel people were properly notified. Uh, one of the requirements is that they have to have a sign within 15 days of the hearing. Um, they did that last month, but as of uh, tonight, the sign still says October 18th, and um, that's on the sign that's at the dead end of the property, and the other sign is uh, on the back side of Walmart behind a delivery traffic only sign, so people wouldn't be able to see that sign anyway, unless they went past the sign. Um, my third concern is that um, with them wanting to be a part of the community and expand into um, the park and include a parking lot to do that, people are going to be using that parking lot that don't go to their church, so people are going to be 
you know, going through our neighborhood to get there. And I've also included some pictures of on-street parking um, within the past month. This is just four examples, but a lot of the times you can only get one car through at a time um, with the people that are street parking. And um, especially with um, high school football games, uh, on-street parking can get out of hand sometimes. So with all that being said, um, I really don't think it's a good idea to build a church there. Um, and I hope that you um, decline the conditional use. Awesome. Thank you. Sir, this on-street parking seems to be day and night. Is it constant? Yes. Um, there is a lot of on-street parking. Um, while the neighborhood is quiet, um, there is a lot of on-street parking, and you have to weave in and out of traffic um, to get home sometimes. And if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those, too. Okay. Good. Thank you. Next person would like to speak in opposition? Come on down. Hey, y'all. My name is Sean Pacera, uh, 1318 Sunset Drive. I uh, actually had the privilege of talking to Paul over the phone about this and get to voice my concerns, which is really great. So thanks, Paul, for taking the time. Oh, man. Yeah, on-street parking, I mean, there's so many issues. And the way that I think about this is like, I follow Jesus too, and being against the church being here is not shaking a fist at God. <laughs> um, it's a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't fit. To have that one entrance is just not good for traffic for a multitude of reasons. It's older homes, it's smaller homes, it's homes that people have turned garages into third bedrooms, so they park in their small, very like uh, uh, uphill driveway, and then so there's a lot of street parking, there's rent houses with multiple occupants, so people park in the street. So just like Blake said, people are moving kind of in and out. Um, that's a, a very big concern. Also, as you can see from the pictures, there's no sidewalks. Everyone walks in the street. It's the, one of the things we pride ourselves about this neighborhood is how quiet it is. Um, moms with strollers come to walk down our street. The high school running team goes down our street. The high school marching band goes down our street because people don't drive a lot there. So adding this many vehicles coming in and out, and it won't just be Sundays. It'll be the weddings and the funerals and adding events. And you know, even one of the things Paul said is like, that might not even be their forever home. So it might be another church that does something every day of the week. You know, we have to think long term here. So I think that's, those are big concerns. For me, like, the ministry is our neighborhood. We kind of do life in our front yard. So I put a big swing so my kids can be out front. Our neighbor who's across the streets here, our kids who are seven and four cross the street together, they hold hands and cross the street together to go to basically their adopted grandmother's house every day almost. And that would stop. Like, our people being in the front yards, kids playing in the street, kids playing basketball in the street would stop if this happened. And so I've told Paul, like, those are my concerns. If, you know, if they really cared about the people in this community, that's a big concern. Several of the people that came up to speak in favor of it, named Acklin Gap, Greenbrier, they don't even live in Conway or in that neighborhood. They've been doing ministry in this neighborhood. Being the church there or not, they're going to keep doing that. Great, please keep, you know, those are great things. So those are my big concerns is the, the safety is just, I, like, I fear for my kids. We don't have sidewalks. People park in the street. I park in the street. It's just our driveway is very narrow and, and very uphill so yeah that's the biggest things I think um, and yeah I got to voice that to Paul so I'm hoping he's hearing that and the people at one church are hearing that I'm praying for them like consistently they find a good place I know our church that I'm a part of really struggled to find a place I know how hard that is uh, I spent 10 years in environmental uh, permitting and residential development I know how hard it is to get the right permits and the right find the right place so yeah I'm praying for you guys praying for one church y'all find the right spot I don't think this is it. Thank you. Thank you. The next person who would like to speak in opposition? Anyone? My name is Philip Parrish. I live at Seven Avenue Wood Drive on the west side and Smoking Oak subdivision. How much time do I have? Three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, thank you for hearing my time. I was baptized in a creek very much like Tucker Creek, and I'm a little bit conflicted uh, uh, that I think, and in deference to the uh, property owners that live 
will be most impacted by this church uh, if it goes in. I think that a church would be the second best use of the property other than what it is now. And I understand the Baker Trust has the right to sell it to whoever they so choose. I was disappointed to learn from the Baker family that they had offered to the city to purchase this property and the city passed on this, which I think was a great lack of vision that the city should have considered buying this property as adjacent green space to the current parkland. And still, if that is an option, that would be my recommendation as a taxpayer that they consider finding a way to negotiate with the property owners and the church to see if there's a way to initiate a campaign for a sales tax to possibly purchase this green space adjacent to the park that is. And there is a practical reason why I think the current way God made it is the best use of that land at this time. If I was on my last military deployment, TDY, in 2019 when the flooding happened, the massive flooding in Conway and Tucker Creek seriously almost uh, flooded out several neighborhoods in that area of the park. And that's still a real possibility it could happen again. We all know and have heard that green space, grass and trees does a better job of absorbing rainwater and can ease the risk of additional flooding in that area. Whereas we also know that more asphalt is just gonna create more runoff into the creek. And if we have another extreme flooding event, the next one, more asphalt may increase the risk of flooding in that area. I think that is a practical reason to try to find a way for the city to purchase this land to add to the park. And I will say, uh, like I said, if it were me, if this, if it can't be used as green space, if there's not a way for the city to get it, I think a church probably is, in my opinion, the second best use, but I personally would like to see it remain green space if the city could find a way to buy it from the bakers, if that's at all possible. I would be in favor of as, of a, as a taxpayer, I know some of my neighbors would be, uh, but I also understand the concerns of those that live and will be most impacted by the traffic. I have to take their word for it. They know what's gonna be most impactful to them because of the traffic concerns. I Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in opposition? Yes, ma'am. I'm Marsha Lacey. I live at 20 Ironwood. And I will say I fought against Walmart because I look out my back door and there it is. But they came through with the traffic and the trucks and everything. And at this point, I'm truly glad they're there because I can get on the bike trail and do my mile and a half walk, which I did today. I'm 87 years old and in really good health. And I'm like Phil, the church. But I did not understand from his speech about the conditional use permit. I, my concern is that that would eventually, if the church were to dissolve, would that go commercial? I can answer that no. What? No, ma'am, it would not. It's still, well, your sign, your thing said uh, review of a, of a conditional yeah. use permit. Yeah. And it's a conditional use for religious activities within a residential zoning. Okay, could it ever go commercial? It would have to be rezoned to commercial, and it is highly unlikely because of the use um, is not congruent with what Mr. Walden was talking about earlier. Okay. Well, I don't see that. Well, I just enjoy looking out on all the green space and when I'm walking. And I would like to see the city buy. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? <coughs> Good evening. I'm Suzanne Krausen, and I live at number five Ironwood, right next door to Phil and just down the street from Marsha. And I love Diane. <laughs> I have, we have four that I just think of right off, Second Baptist people living right on that street in Ironwood. 
And my concern is this. That, and I walked out there and, and walked all around. I've lived there for 41 years. Raised four kids. All my boys played football out there on, on, on Gatlin. And I, and I love Gatlin and I love that green space. And I will tell you, I think the part that I'm thinking about has 50 huge trees. It, it is a beautiful, beautiful space, and I'm glad that they've had chain link around it and have kept it like that. I, have y'all do, do you all have y'all ever walked out there to see that? Yes, ma'am. And and what it looks like, and boy, we got blue herons, great blue herons down there in that creek, and I don't think that they would be there. And this is something that's just kind of personal to me. I mean, I didn't even know Tripp Trip Leach is a wonderful friend of mine, and I didn't know that he was going to get up here and say that, and I don't want to cause any crossways things because we all love Jesus, and I know he loves us. <laughs> and um, But it's just so pretty and so nice, and I, j I love churches, but I don't think that a parking lot and a church can do what the trees and the green grass can there. And I'm like Phil, I think that it would be wonderful for us, the, the city, to buy that and, and put it in there. After all, we gave up a lot when we, when that all of that went to Walmart and Chick-fil-A, and I love them. But, and you said, very unlikely. Well, quite a few years ago, it was very <laughs> unlikely that there was going to be Chick-fil-A and Walmart. And so that I know that's what she's talking about. I'm 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 76, so we not may not be here to be around, but there will be others that will be there. And I invite you. She walked a mile and a half. I walked five miles on that. And it's it's uh, we have a lady that is in a wheelchair, and she's a bird watcher, and she is a teacher here in this town. And I just think about her going up and down out there and, and has her little motorized electrical vehicle, you know, her, her wheelchair. What's that going to do to her bird watching? Okay. And I'm going to say this to, to, to one church. Yes, okay. I was raised in a little church. One church is not going to just be there on Sunday and Wednesday because they're going to have weddings. They're going to have funerals. They're going to have family reunions. They're going to have Sunday school class meetings out there and which they should be and I love one church my my across the street neighbor uh Roy Stone yes, all right I love one church I don't mean that I just God help us find the right solution <laughs> amen thank you do we have anyone else that would like to speak in opposition Okay. Seeing that there is none. Uh, planning gonna... staff did receive one more public comment today. I sent it out via email, but I'm going to read it to the record for you guys right now. I am very concerned about the application for conditional use, which would allow for the construction of a 600 seat auditorium and 160 parking spaces on a residential lot located on the dead end of our neighborhood at 1301 Sunset Drive by One Church of Conway. Current construction drawings so show one entrance and one exit point that they are only accessible through Sunset Drive and Meadow Drive. I have lived in this neighborhood for 48 years and was under the impression that this area was zoned for residential only. I am not in favor of this because of the one entrance and one exit that would cause a large amount of traffic in our neighborhood on certain evenings and on Sundays when I would be trying to enter and exit my residence. If another ex entrance and exit would be available on the other side of the church, this would be a much better option. That's from Gladys Hilliard, 2410 Meadow Drive. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. You timed yourself. <laughs> okay, if we don't have any more public comment, we will bring it back into commission for discussion. Oops, excuse me. Uh, questions. Commissioners, what do we think? Please, sir. So, this 
probably the staff. What's the what's the reasoning behind a, a more something more dense than R one being the right fit if you know for a future rezoning? That that's typically when I include that comment, it's not necessarily saying that that's the that's the right fit. That's likely what the market would bear gotcha. in this in this location. So essentially because there's there's a lot of constraints on that property uh, and given its its location that development as a standard single family uh, subdivision is is not likely because of size I'm just saying that that's an unlikely scenario gotcha okay uh, and then I, while you're up there um, are there, if this were to be approved today and it went through and got through the city council and all that, are, are there other options for additional access points that would still be considered? Or when you said that the city didn't want to per, uh, pursue eminent domain, is that completely off the table? I'm just trying to understand I, what could change if it was approved. I think that's probably the question better suited to talk to the, the folks in Bentonville at Walmart because it. That's, you know, in, in our discussions, the, they were very clear that they, they kind of wanted to leave access as it, as it currently stands. And uh, so in terms of the city going through the eminent domain process, uh, it, it would be a significant battle. Yeah, one second. Behind the church, is that a street? Is that an entry point behind the church? Turn around. I'm, uh, uh, which direction are you pointing on the, on the screen? Know. Like left or right or top or To bottom? the left behind the church, where? If it, Well, you'll note on the, on the top, there's an original conceptual <laughs> site plan uh, that had uh, a primary access coming off of the the Walmart parking lot, which is to the left. Okay. On the, the revised conceptual site plan, um, it has primary access coming off of, of Sunset Drive. There. It's it's not a street; it's a walking trail. That I was seeing. Oh, you're talking you're talking about on the top. That's that's where the uh, Kinley Kinley Trail is yeah. on on the the top there. Okay. So we're yeah. There's Tucker Creek and there's there's Kenley Trail up there on the, the top portion. Okay. So w one more question, James. Um, when I was looking into this, trying to familiarize myself with the area, <coughs> the easiest way I got there was going through the high school, between mm -hmm. the stadium and the auditorium. All of the traffic, uh, I guess, estimates and the the things in the in the report talk about. Sunset and Meadow. Did did we look at how it might impact the high school and traffic through there? Uh, no, more than likely, if you're if you're thinking about the times where the school is causing traffic and the times that a, a, a church is causing traffic, they're they're not concurrent. Uh, typically, I mean, I I don't know of a lot of churches that have you know church on on Friday nights or you know, seven o'clock in the morning or at three o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, more than likely, but based on their operations or similar operations of another religious facility, church, uh, you know, more than likely they're gonna, it would be Sunday morning or Sunday evening. Uh, but would it provide parking for events at the school? <coughs> would that be parking uh, that, that, that they would use? That would be entirely up to the, the, the property owner, essentially. Whether whether they allowed access to the site or not, so it's that's not that's not something that would be a, a condition you know propagated by by staff. I see Mr. Hudson's here shaking his head. Yes. Yeah. I guess the main thing that I keep hearing is about the traffic, and I think there was one person that spoke in, or a couple of people that spoke in favor that were saying that there was a huge discrepancy between what the um, traffic study was and what 
there actually was. And I just kind of wanted, I know we were kind of talking through it, but just one more clarification on that as to why they're, they're saying that their membership now, they only have maybe a hundred to 200, which we know all church, our, our goal, I guess, is for most church memberships to grow. So that's, you know, we, we know that'll happen, but is, is there a huge discrepancy from, from what the staff sees between what they're saying and what research that the city staff did? I mean, I, I mean, from a, a huge from a standpoint here? of you can you can look at the the number of, of parking spaces that they'll mm -hmm. have on the site, and that's yeah. largely going to limit the number of of cars that that would come in there. When you're looking at traffic generation, you know, it, it's not necessarily just at one point in time. So the basis of, of the way that we analyze that, and it, it is purely an estimate, right? I mean, it is an estimate as much as an estimate is an estimate. Um, it's, it's based on the IT uh, trans, transportation or, or traffic demand model or what, I, I can't remember what the, the specific model, tra uh, the ITE, the Institute, Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual. And so basically that what that book and, and we have an online tool that is based out of that, essentially they go out and do survey of various types of uses, various types of uses, church being being one of those. They take a statistical analysis of that and then you basically come out with, with something where you can plug in so many trips per square foot of a of a particular use. And so that's our sort of the math that we did is we've got 21,000 square feet. It says X number of trips per square foot. Therefore we get this. So that's what it, what it is on a, on a typical uh, Sunday based on that. That now that's not to say that you're going to, I mean, that would obviously result in people parking over on top of one another so that you would, you would assume in that situation that that might be distributed to different times of day. Again, you know, as they said, they, they typically operate on a, a Sunday morning only. There is no restriction, so should a different type of, you know, church go in there at some point, it could be that they operate Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or Sunday evening, so. Is a trip considered round trip or one way? It's, it is one way. in and out. In and out, yeah. okay. James, I guess it's the same traffic model you've been using for... Every yeah, it's it's the it's, it's the you, same. You didn't change your process. For no, this. okay. No, it's the same, and uh, it, you know there it's not a perfect science. Trip generation is not a perfect science. I have a question, and it's probably the same question I have every time we deal with a traffic issue and a land use issue. We're not necessarily tasked with figuring out the traffic for the street. We're tasked with is this a proper use of the land? Is that a correct assumption? Is that a correct statement? I mean, we take into account the traffic. But if we look at what this land is and what it is, is, is our main task to figure out, and this is just to make sure we're on the same page here, is this a good use of this land here? I don't know that, and I feel for all the emotional arguments around parking on the street and all of that. I get that, but I don't think that's a land use issue. That is a, maybe you shouldn't park on, I don't know how that works. I, I get, you know, so I'm trying to figure out to make sure I'm heading the right direction with my, with my thinking here. The traffic, in there is one thing and that is a traffic department whoever issue but is this a question of what is this land good for what can we do with this and the use of that land right so in, in terms of evaluating conditional use permits what you are looking at is the land use what are the aspects of that that particular land use in this site so it could be what are the traffic impacts potential traffic impacts that that occur what are the noise impacts that might occur what are the light impacts? What, what are the sort of various types of externalities that could affect adjacent property? So traffic is one of those things that, that you look at and consider within a, a broader view of what are the overall impacts. That's why you look at conditional uses because you're looking at is that particular use appropriate in this area based on all of the impacts that it might have? And that's those. It's it's a sort of a broad look at everything. I have traffic concerns that I'll do in discussion. But while you're here, I have more of a question about the flooding impacts. I know a lot of times development, especially something of this size, changes the topography in a way that could 
if this is a flood zone, could it cause the neighborhoods around with the way it's going to be developed to flood if we have flooding events like we've had the past few years? You'll you'll notice um, that's that's something that Mr. Treese has already already kind of looked at, uh, but largely the activity on site would would occur outside of the floodplain. So this this property. Um, part of it is, is floodway, part of it is uh, flood zone AE, which is basically where we've established a base flood elevation in that area. So it, those, are, those are technical issues that would be, if it, if it were to move forward when it went through development review, that would be something that would be examined. But just, to, just a general glance from a, from a planner's standpoint in terms of looking at it, largely what they're proposing to do is outside of the floodplain. Uh, just to add to that, Laura, that could change the flow of water. And because it is concrete and it doesn't absorb water, that water's going to go other places. So it could change the flow of water. <coughs> and I guess that wouldn't, we wouldn't know that to review, but the water's going to flow in a different direction. Yeah, we would, so we would require basically a, a drainage report that goes associated with this where basically they would have to mitigate pre-construction to post-construction. So post-construction, they would, they would need to be, it would need to be entering and leaving the property in the same way, the same rate, same volume as it was before it was developed. All right, now I have, I do have concerns about the traffic that's being raised. I'm, in that neighborhood quite a bit and there is a lot of on-street parking and two vehicles do not pass through there at the same time. Um, I wouldn't be as concerned if the traffic that was going to be coming into the facility was spread throughout the day, but you have a time period, especially when a church lets out, everybody's beating feet to get out of the parking lot and there, I think there would be major safety and traffic issues, just trying to get the inflow and outflow of traffic out of that area back through a neighborhood onto those more um, minor arterial streets. And I agree with, Laura's, with what Laura said, and my concern is about emergency personnel that may need to get there. We've seen some elderly people come up today, and even younger people could have an emergency. They have to deal with the on-street parking as it is, and then there could be other parking, other traffic coming through there. If there's, if it's almost a one-way street at that point, and uh, or one, yeah, one-way street or one-car street because of the parking. So I see there could be a problem with emergency personnel trying to get to a residence, maybe. So devil's advocate, if this is developed as something else that they don't need a, a conditional use for, say it's. Yeah, then and they don't have to come before us. How do you mitigate that? Because you're still going to be parking on the street and it's going to be all these units. So you're not going to get away from the one way street being an issue. So do we punish the applicant because people park on the street and you can't have it because they park on the street? Or do we, because they, if someone decided, James, question for you, if someone decided if the owner sold and developed it as duplexes, townhouses, I don't know, right? Something they don't have to come back before us for, right? Love density. Yeah, that they don't see us for. Then we have no say so over what they do. We have the normal development reviews, but as far as like a review, they don't need that. So if it's developed as that, I don't know how many units can fit on that land or whatever, but it's going to be enough to where we're going to have the same, you're going to have the issue of the traffic and not the say so. We're not going to be able to go in and say, okay, you can't build this set of duplex because of the traffic. So we have to, I'm, but I'm, I'm, very, I'm very aware of the traffic issues you guys are mentioning, but there's a way around what we're saying without us, it coming to us, and it's still going to be an issue there. So we're not, going, we're not going to sit here at this table, whatever this thing is, and figure out a way of the traffic. If they park on the street, it can be gotten around, right? And it doesn't have to be what we're saying. Though. Right. Well, with the issue at hand, I feel like it is, it's a big problem. If it were to be low density, this is R1, I guess. So it would be low density. It wouldn't be as many cars anyway. Uh, if it's low density, single family homes or whatever. In, in essence, that's just the, the, the way I look at it. It's it is the the land use rights that are vested with this property currently is for for single family development. If it were to go through something that didn't conform to the minimum standards of R one, for instance, like a PUD, or if it were 
uh, duplex development or any type of multifamily, it would it, it basically come back to the Planning Commission and, and City Council because th they would have to get different land use rights to develop the property in a more dense way. Yeah, and the flood line would also prohibit the development of that whole basically Tucker Creek Trail edge um, from being multifamily. So you would essentially just have the southern portion of that property that would be developable for residential. And even if it was developed as duplexes or whatever, most likely all of those people would not be coming home or leaving at the exact same period of time. So the traffic would be more spread out in the neighborhood versus, I mean, I th and see, I look at that as a frequency though. There's, there's going to be more trips made than more trips, but at different times. It's like when church starts, you got to have an influx of people, and when church is over, you got all these people leaving because you know. Five o'clock coming home from mm -hmm. a baseball game, you go to that. So that's not going to be mitigated by the fact that we don't have a church there. It's going to be cars in the street that probably shouldn't be in the street to begin with. But there are fear cars. There'll be fear fear cars coming through. That's what. It feels like our responsibility is should in our conversation should solely be focused on the conditional use permit in the church, not what else might, you know, I mean, we, we can predict and speak in hypotheticals all day long, but I'm not really sure that as much fun as that is, um, that, that that's really where we need to focus our conversation. I think we probably just need to say, you know, we, we have this one thing in front of us and is it the right use for that? And then what may or may not come after that I guess it'll have to be something that may or may not be dealt with down the road. I, I just kind of. But like James was saying, we have to take all those factors, all those variables <coughs> into this, con because it is a conditional use. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just mean, I don't know that we need to think about, well, if we don't approve this, it might be a oh, yeah, apartment. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know that we need to get into those hypotheticals. It seems like we just, is this the right use for the church or not? Yes or no? Well, we already voted before that we agreed it was a good use. Um, I think it's now just coming down to this access, singular access point has created a burden for the neighborhood. So, still think the use is appropriate. Just concerned about the access, just like everybody else. Yeah, I don't know that you can't go back and redo, but I don't know that we would have approved it if it was just had single access point to begin with, right? Which is what brings us to where we are. Yes, ma'am. Do we need to know that it's more than just five minutes? Sure. Yeah, I understand. I'm a Wampus cat. I bleed blue. <laughs> Can I make a comment, please? Yes, ma'am. I live right behind Conway High School, baseball field. Never been a problem. The kids are great. Even though one of them was, had such an arm, they broke my patio glass <laughs> one time. But it, it was all right because she had an arm on her. But anyway, you know, the kids are always <coughs> great. Like that lady said, it's every night. Yeah. You know, and Wednesday, the band practices early and sometimes late. You know, I know that from experience. I've had them in athletics and I've had them in music and other arts myself. Mine are all grown. But that one incident, it's going to kill us. It's going to force you. me to leave. Thank you. Yeah, we got to cut it off at some point. Um, commissioners, what say you? We call it to a vote. Somebody like to make a motion? Perfect. That's right. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and then the vote falls where, where That's it falls. Right. So I'll make a motion to approve the, um, approve the commission use permit. Um, 
with the staff recommendations here. I know they recommended we deny, but if we approve it, they had the um, following conditions, the one through 10 there. I recommend that we approve the conditional use permit with the 10 listed items there attached to it. I'd like to second that. Okay, there's a motion on the floor from Arthur and a second uh, from Ms. Sanders Jones. I will call the roll. All right. Ms. King. No. Ms. Jones. Yay. I'm a yay as well, I'm Mr. Yay. Ingram. Nay. Nay. No. No. Yes. You want the yay stories? Motion passes with it. Uh, I'm sorry, my math is terrible right at this instant. <laughs> Four to three, yes. Thank you. Okay, so in the event, the motion passes. Mr. Chair, is it okay if we take a five minute recess? To yes, let folks absolutely. clear out? Yes, sir. No, we amended that. Oops, sorry. Yes, that's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, just take a five-minute recess. We'll let people clear out. It's usually there's a lot of side conversations that happen, and it gets kind of distracting.
Okay, we are back in session. Jumping into our next item, item 2B. This is a request to annex. This is 30.27 acres located at the south of Lower Ridge Road, east of East German Lane. Mr. Walden. Yes, uh, the applicant is requesting to uh, annex this under R1 zoning for single family uh, residential staff uh, concurs with that, that request. Uh, on the comprehensive plan, uh, the or not the comprehensive plan, but the Lower Ridge Road Corridor Study, this is indicated uh, for traditional neighborhood, uh, which uh, calls for a compact pedestrian-oriented mixed-use area that includes various types of housing, commercial activities, and open space. So uh, might think more similar to, to Hendrix Village. Uh, however, it, they're annexing as, as R1, which is... Uh, which is a lower impact type use, so that, that's uh, fine. Uh, in terms of looking at uh, traffic impact, it, the impact of this could be significant, but it is a large uh, piece of property. Um, it's the likely use would be for single family residential. Nothing has been submitted for review, so we don't have anything a basis for that. But looking at the the acreage of the property, uh, potentially up to 175. Uh, standard single-family lots, which would generate on a typical weekday about 1,652 uh, vehicle trips uh, on there. Uh, it's not within any, within any regulated floodplains or floodways. Um, Lower Ridge Road is a, a major arterial, uh, but it's open ditch and, and uh, city maintained. So based on all the development that we've seen go out there, there's more than likely going to be one of the ones that will be moved up the, the list for improvement. Uh, over time. Uh, looking at all of the uh, different departments that reviewed this, uh, planning department recommends annexation, the fire department recommends annexation, uh, provided fire flow requirements are met, uh, which the applicant will have to con uh, confirm with Conway Corporation. Uh, Conway Corporation recommends annexation, the transportation department does as well. So based on that, staff recommends approval of the request. Uh, would allow for appropriate development of the property and be a valuable addition to the city. Any questions? No, sir. Mr. Longy, we're going to open up the floor to uh, an opportunity for you to add anything, if you have anything to add. I do not, unless you have any questions. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? All right. Anyone here to speak? Anyone else here to speak in favor of the request? or anyone to speak in opposition of this request to annex. All right, seeing that there is none, we will bring this back into commission. Commissioners, any further discussion needed? Open the floor for a motion. Move to approve. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck with your development. Okay, next item is uh, 2C. This is a request to rezone from R1 to O2. This is at uh, 0.14 acres immediately uh, west of 449 Reedy Road, or uh, as identified as Integrity Insurance Building. Mr. Wall. Yes, uh, so this is at the corner of, of Ryan and, and Reedy. As you indicated, the, the property is uh, split zoned, uh, so the front portion of it is zoned O2 and the back portion of it is zoned R1. Under the applicant's uh, previous um, uh, development review approval, uh, they did not have uh, approval to install a parking lot. Uh, since then, a gravel parking lot has uh, appeared on site uh, where detention, I believe, was proposed. Um, so at, as a result, this was identified by staff uh, notifying that the applicant of the sort of the violation uh, on there. Uh, the first step in, in rectifying this is to rezone the property to uh, a zone that allows uh, parking as that, that principal use to tie it all together. Um, so that's basically bringing the, the back half of the property in conformance with the O2 uh, zoning in the front. Uh, the site is partially within a, a power line easement that directly abuts the, the same easement on A1 and to the west and R1 property to the south. So it's, uh, you know, for any type of structural use adjacent, there's really minimal risk for impact because 
uh, someone's not going to develop under a, a power line or God bless them if they do, they're going to have some, some real problems. But um, the areas, the surrounding areas is uh, predominantly single family residential and undeveloped. Uh, staff did not find that the rezoning would, would likely harm adjacent property. Uh, so based on that, staff recommends approval of rezoning request uh, because it, it would uh, not negatively impact adjacent property and help bring the site into compliance uh, with the applicable land use regulations. So any questions? I don't think so. All right. Commissioner, thank you. Anyone here to speak in favor of this request? Any additional comments? It's my property. I just wanted to, just for the record, the retention area was on the north side by Ryan, um, between the building and the road, and we actually paid a fee in lieu of that before we got the certificate of occupancy. So that was already addressed two years ago. In the parking lot, we, we just didn't have the money to finish it two years ago when we, when we were doing it, so we're starting it now, and, and we're working with Levi prior, prior to him leaving. So hopefully, apologize about the violations, that we're going to get it all up to code and ready to go. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone here speak in opposition to this rezoning request? All right, commissioners, what do you say? Seems congruent. <clears throat> Second. second. We have a motion from Arthur and a second from Ray. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As well. Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Our final public hearing item this evening is a request for a conditional use permit for a kennel in an I-3. Mr. Walden. Yes. So this, this application's got a fun name with it uh, for uh, Posh Park. Um, but it, it is located at the corner of Mayor Lane and, and South Amity on about 1.7 acres. Um, the existing structures on site are a, a 4,500 uh, square foot metal office building plus a 1,440 square foot and the 960 square foot metal accessory structures. Uh, based upon sort of the, the applicant's uh, intended development, uh, it, it appears that those, all those structures will remain. Um, the requested use is for a, a kennel. The competent plan indicates this location for light industry. Um, based on our traffic analysis, uh, we estimate that the, it would probably generate around 150 uh, vehicle trips per typical workday or weekday. Um, we don't have reliable traffic counts for the area, but uh, we estimate that in this location, about 3,500 to 6,000 uh, average daily trips on the, the streets there. Um, in terms of looking at it, there are no uh, plans for, for street improvement in the area. It's not within any regulated uh, floodplains or floodways. Um, looking at this, um, essentially the, the, define, the, the zoning code defines anything as a kennel that is an establishment wherein a person, business, or organization engages in the practice of boarding, breeding, buying, grooming, Letting for hire, training for a fee, or selling uh, dogs or other animals. So, uh, as you can tell from the the site plan, they intend to be somewhat of like a a daycare, doggy daycare type use uh, there with some some additional uh, uses with it. Uh, the development is generally consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, while the site is uh, predominantly surrounded by commercial and industrial uses, there are some single-family uses that abut the property to the east across Mayor Lane. Uh, so while the location is suitable for the requested use, we do need to have uh, sort of appropriate conditions in place to, to mitigate the, the negative impacts uh, that, that could occur on, towards adjacent property. Uh, so based on all of that uh, review, um, staff recommends approval of the conditional use permit uh, with uh, 14 listed conditions. I'm, I'm willing, more than happy to, to go through those or uh, just let y'all, uh, y'all have the ability to read as well. So uh, any questions? Only question I have is why CUP in lieu of just going C3? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I, I, from a from a staff standpoint, we we would prefer that 
because it does protect adjacent property. It's yeah. more likely yeah. to adjust the protect adjacent property. Sorry, I'm getting tired. I like it. <laughs> I don't know. I, did you have a question, Rebecca? Oh. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It, that I, When they come up, I'm sure they can answer that question. I have a question for Yeah, Jane. this may not be the time. It's kind of ticky and it's down in the weeds. Um, like number six, no animals shall be outside before 6 a.m. or after 10 p.m. I mean, I'm sure the intent is that the animals shouldn't be out like in mass quantity. Like, you know, but like, yeah, but like if they have one dog and they take it outside, to, they can do that, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. The playground. I, mean, not I, just, open I don't, wouldn't want them to get in trouble for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Well, we, you know, we will be out there at three a.m. I'm sure uh, you will. Diligently enforcing this. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure no dogs are having potty but breaks you know, at that time. Just saying. Go back to number 14, because I, I don't know if that was to Brandon's question. or So if it's not done in two years, and five, can you explain 14 and being, I think, I'm Yeah, the, the reason why we have had uh, numerous zombie conditional use requests that essentially we've had ones that have been approved five, ten years back, and then they, they never get developed, and then they roll around and... Uh, come back and say, "Hey, we want to we want to build this now." Uh, knowing that you know over a five to ten year period, conditions with an area can dramatically change that might make that use a lot less appropriate uh, based on what what's changed. And so, as as a general practice, uh, it's not something that we have in the regulations yet that we we do intend to have in the regulations. Basically, that if it's it's a use it or lose it. Essentially, because if you're if you're not intending to use it, then there's no reason to have that vested land use right. Okay, thank you. Makes sense. Okay. Any further questions for James? Thank you. We have anyone else here to speak in favor? Name and address, if you will. Yes, Kevin Miller, uh, eleven seven forty Mall Mill Boulevard. So I am the owner of Posh Park. Uh, we're very excited about this opportunity to be in Conway. Um, we have been searching for about a year or more uh, for a property, and it's very hard to find one to put a kennel in Conway uh, and not, you know, disturb too many people. So we uh, think we found the right one. Um, <laughs> we currently have a property in Maumelle that we use right now. We know there's a high demand uh, for doggy daycare and boarding here just because we get a lot of people from Conway that are using our services as well as uh, employees. So... Um, we have, uh, there's facilities here that are no longer taking puppies or taking uh, daycare or boarding because everybody's full. Um, so that's about all I really have to say. I'm new to this, so I'm open to questions and I know y'all have lots of questions, so I'm open to those. Are you in agreement with the staff recommendations? I am. Most of those I was fine with. I had a curious about number eight what um i know y'all want to put shrubs around uh but this is 1.7 acres so it's a lot of fencing around this property um this is also it's industrial use so my understanding was it was for you know this type of business so um just not sure about number eight that's well yeah go ahead Animal cart well, that's what I'm trying to get clarification. Uh, the, we currently have eight foot wooden fences in our play areas right now. Uh, the place currently does have um, fencing around it, which we were going to put, you know, a, a, a privacy cover over it so the dogs aren't going to stand there. Most of the times, the dogs don't stand and bark out too much. They're usually trying to get back in. And we will have indoor play areas, so most of the time, the dogs come in and run around and play inside. Mm -hmm. We do have outdoor play. There will be some out there, but, um, you know, like I said, it's very rare they stand at the fence and bark out. <laughs> and we will have staff <laughs> in the play yard, so we regulate the barking. We don't just let them have, I mean, our staff would go crazy if they bark all the time. So. But do you know what a noise abatement curtain is? There's... There's different terms, there's different levels of that. So I know what that means, but to like, that's what I'm trying to get clarification well, on. Tell me what exactly. Do we have a clear definition of a noise, noise abatement, abatement curtain? curtain? I mean, there's all different sizes, of course. I mean, that would 
could be a wall that has insulation in it that would be noise invasive. So it's basically just <laughs> something other than than chain link fence that helps cut down on on noise. And I guess the exterior play area isn't the entire perimeter of the 1.7 acres. There's going to be designated play areas. Is what I was envisioning from what you said. Yeah, and to begin with uh, the building now on the right, we will start with the play yards with three, and we will kind of grow into these areas, you know, as we go. So we're going to start small, of course. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time, but really, it's going to be on the other side of the building. Most of the playing and the barking and the noises is going to come from the east side, or sorry, the west side of the building. Homes are to the right, uh, east as well. Mm -hmm. Well, they shouldn't hear as much as what you know. The barking is going to go from the other direction. So. <coughs> Any further questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Open the floor to any more public comment. If we have anyone here to speak in favor or opposition of this request, come on down. I did have a question for Mr. Miller. Um, will you be having, I guess you will have animals overnight Correct. and you will have staff yes, we do. overnight. Okay. All right. The floor is yours, sir. I'm Don Havens. My wife Kay and I live at 1900 South Amity Road. We're immediately across the street from Mayor Lane. On the left, residential from there or them. Um, I think we just got our property values killed right here, or we're in the process of doing it. But I've got some, a couple of questions, I guess, but I want to preface those remarks by saying I appreciate the work that went into this. Um, what comments and stuff is in, included in this address a lot of our concerns, and, and I appreciate that. There's a few questions I got. How many animals are we talking about at any given time? Are we Mr. talking Miller, about one do you dog know? or a hundred dogs? Well, I wish you'd had my dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to bark. Yeah. Um, the other other question I've got is, uh, I understand the definition that was given, but there's some loopholes there. Does this include goats, ducks, chickens, <laughs> reptiles? <laughs> Rodents exclusive to dogs and cats. Okay, as long as, as long as that's it, we're good. But um, I also noted down here that if there's an animal on premises, there'll be someone on premises 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Who's going to enforce that? I would assume there'd be a certain amount of liability too to take on if you were left someone's dog unattended. Yeah. I police my speeding and stuff, but uh, sometimes my definition of correct is not the same as my oldest son is in law enforcement. I'm just curious about who's going to have oversight here and final say. In uh, boarding and grooming and breeding. No breeding. I thought breeding was in, yeah, included in that. They could. I think that's all encompassing as far as what, what, what their definition is. Yeah, well, it's in there. So uh, basically, that's about all I got, other than the fact that I see it being really detrimental to my property base. We moved out there a long time ago. We liked the area, loved the location. We got good neighbors that moved in with us, uh, Conway Courier Service. UPS is out there, Weaver Bailey, 
you're all good and, and we don't have problems with those folks. We don't want any problems. We, we're retired. I'm not getting up at six o'clock in the morning. You know, if the dogs are barking, I'm calling somebody. So stay by your phone. <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to give you Mr. Miller's cell phone number. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. We have anyone else to speak in favor or opposition? Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I don't appreciate all the giggling and laughing and all this stuff about a bunch of dogs that's going to be across the street from my house, okay? And I want it taken a little bit more seriously than that because I live there 24-7. And I don't want to walk out by my back door and hear a bunch of dogs. I don't own a dog. I don't want a dog. And I don't want to hear a dog. I especially, I don't hear a bunch of them. And um, like he said, our property value has gone to pot probably now because, and I want you to know something, sir. Um, why don't you put it in your backyard? Take your money, whatever it costs, to buy that building. Go buy you two or three acres. Set you a nice big home there and put all your dogs in your backyard. And then you come tell me that they don't bother you. That's what I want you to do. How much do I'm Kay. I'm his wife. Yeah, that's her name. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, you know, I'd like to take this a little bit more serious because I am there. Whether anybody else is over there or not, it won't be him. So uh, I just like would you to consider that this is our home and whatever value it has now, I don't know what the value is going to be when a bunch of dogs are moved in across the street. Understand. Thank you. Thank you. Have anyone else here to speak in favor of opposition? Yes, sir. How are you? Hello, my name is Marty Backey, and I live at 1910 Amity Road. I'm two houses down from this. Uh, my main, one of my main concerns is, I really think a facility like this should be outside the city limits. You know, uh, we live by the lake. We've got several people coming out there already dropping off dogs, just abandoning dogs out in that area. I'm afraid that if we get a facility like this, people are going to just think, oh, there's a dog facility out here. Let's just go drop a dog out here and they'll be running wild. Uh, you know, the other thing I noticed is the, the time frame on uh, Monday through Friday, it was 6 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. or something like that. And then on Saturday and Sunday, it's 8 to 5. Why can't it be 8 to 5 Monday through Saturday if you approve that? I don't think the 6.30 to 5.30, whatever it was, I think 6.30 is a little bit much to open up the kennel and everything. And if you can do it eight to five, two days a week, you could do it seven days a week. But I'm against the whole development. I think it needs to be outside the city limits. There's plenty of places outside the city that have spots that they could go to. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Come on down. Good evening. Um, I'm Shane Dixon. I own CCS Transportation next door, which would be on the side that we're going to put the dogs <laughs> barking. Um, I, I'm, I'm for business. I, I, I agree that I'm, I'm for anybody doing business, been self-employed for 30 years. I, I can appreciate anybody's vision and want to do something. Um, but for the Haven's sake and the other neighbors over there, 
I just want to get, put some thoughts in that, yes, we're, we're a quiet office. We have a trucking company there, a lot of people in and out. Um, and every time someone walks out and we're trying to conduct business, there's, you're, you're looking at dogs barking the whole time. And, and, and I know dogs can be controlled, but I also know that there is, is an issue with the noise and, and, and I would just, and, and there's a lot of wildlife that runs around out there and they're going to see those and that's going to, you know, trigger the barking and, um, I, I'm, I'm not, I hate to say I'm opposed to it, but I would really, uh, be heavy in consideration of what the, what the criteria and the conditions is and, and, and for the neighbor's sake, even more than mine. Um, I mean, I don't live there like they do. I just conduct business there and, um, would appreciate your consideration of their, their situation of being there 24 seven and me being there through business hours through the week. Um, it will change the noise factor there, uh, drastically. And, um, I feel like it will. And like I said, I support you. Want want you want want everybody to succeed in business. Uh, just it it, it is going to have a impact. So thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Miller. Can you confirm for me? Um, there seems to be an assumption that the dogs are going to be let loose in a fence in the backyard and just there all day. Would you confirm that there are times where there's inside play and outside? Like, I'm thinking of like a daycare. I've never had a dog. I've had a kid with a daycare, right? <laughs> and they went outside certain times of the day and they yeah, came in certain times of the day. It is free roam six days, seven days, but we do have times where we play dogs in that time. Like, it's calm down. Like, if the dog is in the barking, we These are dogs that will that are owned by people that just it's like a doggy daycare. They're gonna or they're gonna be boarded for a while. So it's not like the Conway Animal Shelter where you just have dogs for adoption or things like that. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor or opposition to this request? Ms. Yes, I don't Tucker. have a dog in this hunt, but I wanted to take <laughs> an opportunity to be on this side of the podium. I don't remember who was on the commission when Hounds Hideaway came before it, but I do recall that there was a lot of the same concerns, and they have ended up being very good uh, neighbors, and it has been a valuable asset to our community. And if you go on vacation, you have to call them like three months in advance. They stay completely booked. So I think I just think that it would be a valuable asset to our community. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Tucker. Any further commentary? Anybody have anything else to add? We will bring it back into commission. Commissioners. I have a question, I think, for James, now that I've kind of heard and seen um, I noticed the zoning is kind of all over the place out there. There's some A1 and there's some industrial and then a little bit of R1. Can you speak to like what this, was this industrial first or did the residential come in after or was it kind of residential first and the industry and commercial just built in around it? I would probably defer to the, the residents that are out there because I am honestly not sure I, I do not know 
looks like it's been on an as needed basis because probably that was all A1 at one time. Um, and then if the business needs to be here, they got a zoning, and here they got a zoning. So it's just kind of. Yeah. And there's just the one slice of R1 right there. So is there <clears throat> is there any type of noise ordinance after their hours of operation? Because I think were they worry about times all throughout the day? Yeah. Or day and night. Day and night. about it day and night. Day and night, yeah. <clears throat> Any further discussion? James is asking them what it previously to was to get answer to Laura's question. Yeah. Okay. So we we had a little committee back there. Um, essentially, yeah. One, the, the one of the neighbors said that the residential has been there. Some of that residential has been there at least in the mid mid to late fifties, yeah. which pre predates the the industrial park. Thank you. Further discussion. Call it to a vote. Anyone like to? I'll make a motion to approve the condition under a nine parking lot to operate in this uh, area with the staff recommendation, the Mr. Corson staff recommendation. Thank you. We have a motion from Arthur with to approve with the staff's 14 recommendations. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Ray. Yeah, we'll roll call. Ms. King? No. Ms. Sanders-Jones? Yay. I am a yay as well. Mr. Ingram? Yay. 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 Um, motion passes. Okay, now we have, that concludes our public hearing items this evening. We have, the next item is a uh, Item 3A, which is an adoption of our calendar for next year, 2022. I move we adopt our calendar for 2022. Second. All those in favor? Yay. Yay. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Yay. One of those is on your birthday. I'm kidding. I better write the down. <laughs> Motion passes it. unanimously. <laughs> calendar is approved. Is it really? Well, staff posted correct that line. Okay. Right. Uh, and then I guess the... 3B item is the election of officers for our 2022 year. Mr. Walden, what's the best way for us to proceed uh, with that election? <laughs> well, it, you know, it's... Whoever's not here gets elected. <laughs> it, it, the bylaws call for y'all to, to select this each November. Uh, obviously, if you do not feel like you want to select it tonight. You do have December, but uh, you'll certainly need to be thinking along those lines because the chair and the vice chair are both uh, graduating out of the planning commission. So we're, we're going to need to have those two positions filled. Uh, as you're all aware, uh, chair is responsible for running the meeting. So essentially calling items as as Brandon does uh, vice chairs there to step in if uh, the chairs cannot be present or is becomes incapacitated in their duties so Brandon when is your term up is it? yeah this is it for me well Arthur you've been the vice chair yeah he's rolling off too that's what he's saying that was real convenient how that worked <laughs> for you 
So I think the first question is anyone like to volunteer for any of these positions? I'd like easy. to nominate Ray as the chair. She has the experience. She looks ready. She I think it's a great idea. She has good questions. Do you accept? Yeah. You don't ask me questions. Can I still ask questions? Absolutely. Okay. You I just want to yeah. make sure because I have questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. So we have a nomination for Ray. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any sure. opposed? Ray is our new 2022 chair. I want to nominate Rebecca for vice chair. Sounds great. I'll second that. I'll second. I'll accept as long as Ray asks all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay. So we have uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Welcome, Ms. Vice Chair for 2022. You better not be incapacitated. Uh, in no more than two times a year. Okay. Because you know that third one, I don't want to get the nasty yeah, email. You get, you get email. <laughs> and I'm not going to have any more babies. So. <laughs> you promise? Yes, I promise. I promise. What about a secretary? Miss Laura. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> we, I like that, really Laura. You like that? That's a lot of work. Essentially, no. secretary is there if staff is incapacitated. So we we largely fill the function. If Laura can't, if Lauren can't do it, it can't be yeah. done. Lauren, you better show up, girl. <laughs> I second it. All those in favor of that nomination? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. We have filled our positions. Okay, now we're moving on to this selection of commission nominees. I would love to hear how the interviews went last week. Yeah, lay it on us. Your microphone's off. There you go. I'm just, I'm just step away from the microphone. Uh, we had nine eligible nominations uh, submitted by the the deadline. Uh, we did conduct interviews. Um, Two nominees uh, were selected. Those nominees were Alexander Bainey and, and Ethan Reed. Uh, an additional appointment uh, will be made uh, for uh, the remainder of, of Ann's term, which will be ending uh, next year. Uh, we're still uh, exploring that. Hopefully one of the, one of the nominees will, will uh, jump in and, and take that spot. But, No, it's three. That's what he's saying. We're trying to fill that third one. Correct. Do we decide whether we're voting on a slate or individually? Do we ever decide that? Mm -hmm. I, I would I would recommend voting on them as a slate. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be individually. Yeah. If if y'all if y'all want to vote on them individually, that's fine as well. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with. I'm more straight. This is kind of a personnel. Is this something that we can talk about in executive session about the interviews? We're still streaming, or is this kind of like here's what the I would what we're doing? I would recommend if you if you want to continue to have discussion about the nominees, that probably uh, refer that back to the committee if okay. you're not comfortable. With them because I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not, just asking a logistics question. Yeah, like a, yeah. I, I I would not recommend getting an in depth discussion about the the resumes of the nominees at this at, in in the public meeting. Okay. Okay. So do we need to vote on that? Those two, and uh, we're still yes. looking for the third. Yeah. <laughs> The, I think the, the, last, the third the third is being nominated by the mayor. Okay. The last Fair email enough. that we had um, said that we were going to vote individually, like we weren't. The, yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. That's uh, that's entirely up to y'all. Okay. So we are calling a vote 
per nominee. So for the first one for Mr. Alexander, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye as well. Any opposed? Okay. Unanimous. And then Mr. Ethan, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. One no. Any abstention? Okay. So we have five yeas and one absten two abstentions, or one abstention, one no, sorry. Got it? Okay. And that is our official business for this evening. I believe we have one last item on our agenda. We would like to recognize Miss Ann Tucker for her long-term service to this commission. Thank you very much. It has been my pleasure to serve with every one of you. Thank you very much, and I look forward to working with you through the council. So, thank you very much. Pardon? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to write, wave the three ratings on everything, though. You know, Miss Ann, only certain people get called up to the big leagues. Oh, well. <laughs> I True talent know. right there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I've Thanks, enjoyed Ms. it. Tucker. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. That concludes our meeting. If anyone else has any further business, we will adjourn. Can we get a picture? Can we get a group picture for anybody? So moved.